All right, guys, welcome back. Another episode of RX Radio. Uh, our most sought after guest on YouTube, without a doubt, uh, number one in your hearts, Mr. Mike Van Wick. Big Mike Van Wick, as he's known, at Mike Van Wick, as he's known. Um, I don't know if you're watching this on YouTube, it's likely you're watching this on YouTube because everyone, it's just maybe it's because he's so visually appealing that he is the scariest human being. This is honestly my favorite, because we talk like normal, I don't wanna say normal, but we, we talk a lot about industry stuff to start. But as we go through this episode, Mike opens up about his previous career uh, in, how would we, uh, secu- let's just call it security without outing him, but it's like, he'll talk about a client and he'll talk about his previous job as a big, scary guy. And it, it was the most in-depth, um, that I've heard him speak about this part of his life. And as Mike is uh, a very interesting shoot from the hip, straightforward, what you see is what you get, you know, close friend of mine, someone that I, I always feel confident and comfortable reaching out to with any questions I have, um, you know, might be one of the scariest individuals I've ever laid eyes on, but one of the nicest dudes, none the same, uh, none the same, nonetheless. There we go. We're getting it. We're getting it, Lenny. We're getting it. Um, all the same. That's it. There you go. I knew it was in there somewhere. Um, so yeah, really cool look into the the life before the Mike Van Wick that you guys all know and love. Um, so we do talk a little bit about industry stuff, today's common trends, social media and that, but uh, we dig a little bit deeper into you know his ability to manage stress with social media compared to his old life. And he makes reference to a previous client he has in the security days. And it's uh, if you know Mike personally, you know what a wild life he's lived. Uh, so a little bit of insight there to give you a look under the hood of, of such an influential person in our industry. So huge thanks to Mike. Um, and huge thanks. Is today a Vivo read? I think today's a Vivo read. It is. All right. Uh, we're paying bills here, dog. We're trying to keep this thing afloat. Uh, no, with that being said, guys, if you haven't um, if you haven't head over to VivoBarefoot.com yet and got your first pair of Vivo with the plug from the boys, VivoBarefoot.com slash RXD, use code RXRadio. And if you're Australian uh, and you like walking around barefoot, but it becomes increasingly less socially acceptable because that's fucking disgusting, we now have the deal extended through to Australian distributors as well. So your boy's going to bat for you, getting that 20% discount, VivoBarefoot.com slash RXD, RX Radio promo code on your first purchase. So do uh, get those. My favorite training shoes are the first thing in my suitcase when I travel. Uh, They've been saving my knees, saving my back, um, and all around durable. I've had the same pair for a long time. Can't recommend them enough. So huge thanks to Vivo. Huge thanks to Mike for coming on again. He's uh, he's always got a standing spot with us in the studio whenever he needs it. So we do appreciate him. Check him out on Instagram. um, Check him out on his website. All that stuff in the show notes. So guys, do enjoy the episode. And uh, make sure, screenshot, tag, don't send him any angry DMs, please. He, he will find you. He's like Liam Neeson of fitness. Um, but without any further, any further ado, guys, do enjoy the episode. We'll see you next week. Lundy, hit it. You're tuned in to RX Radio. You, have you settled into the fact that you are now, in fact, an influencer? Have yeah. you? Because, like, no, but, like, if you look at the normal trajectory of social media growth, like how long it takes people to acquire a following. Yeah. I don't know of someone, per, at least personally, that has done it as expediently as you have. Yeah, it was like, it's been interesting. <laughs> it's like, I don't, it's funny too, because I see these, like, my girlfriend and me talk about it a lot, because she's like, way more into it than I am. Like, Everyone is way more into it than you yeah, are. Yeah, so I'm just like, I don't know. And she's like, well, you know, a lot of people pay for followers, and they pay for this and pay for that, and I get like that shit every day. These whoever they are writing you being like, I can get you this amount of followers for this much money. And it's just like, I don't know. Why would you ever need that? Cause like, I don't know. I just get these people follow me and I don't like, I put up a video and they're like, Oh yeah, cool man. Blah, blah. And then there's more people, but it's just shit that I would say. Like if me and you were just standing out there talking, yeah. it's not like I'm trying to like cause, like get attention. It's just shit. I say all the time. Right. But you seem to garner a lot of attention. Yeah. Like uh, you can base like the social barometer based off of the number of reposts that someone has to do of like people reposting their stories. Yeah. And I go to yours and it's like, I'm a fan. 
but I also have your cell phone number, so I can just text you. <laughs> and I just see like all the dots on the top of the story. <laughs> like this guy must have spent forty five minutes just reposting other people sharing his shit. No, because like when I first when I first got onto it, that was like the coolest thing to me that people were actually like paying attention. So now I feel bad. Like I want to be like say thank you to the person or like shout them out. So I just keep doing it. Yeah. Like I can't do it for everyone because sometimes I'll obviously miss stuff. I don't see everything. But especially if someone takes the time to like write something about what you said. Yeah. Or like they don't just repost it and put your name. Yeah. Like if someone takes the time to write something, I just like a fucking, it takes me two seconds to say yeah. Has it been a net? Because I was privy to a very interesting conversation that arose in your DM the other day, something about a death threat, which clearly <laughs> this person is unwell. Yeah. But it's like, has it been a net positive, you think? Like on like fuck business on just like it, your live not your livelihood but like your i don't want to say mental state like you seem pretty de- or have an ability to uh, detach from things pretty well has it been a net positive in like kind of having this like meteoric rise and following yeah because i mean i don't see it as like it's just i come to work every day and i go home and play with my dogs and i'm i'm not like a, i'm not it's not like i'm going out in public like i told this to people like you have a persona on Instagram, but it's not real life. Like I don't go out and I'm like seen by all these people everywhere. I go, Mike, 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 Mike. It's like that's what your life would be like in a virtual world, I guess you could say, because you're surrounded by that in a virtual world. But like when I walk around on the street and I come to work every day, it's not like every time I walk in, people are like, oh, like oh my god. I'm just like, it's just I'm doing what I'm doing, right? Yeah. So it's just I don't really notice it. You don't get stopped in public? Not that often. Yeah. Is that I mean, if I do, it's just random. A lot of the times it's just random goods like, oh, I, I saw you on TikTok or I saw you on whatever. I like your videos or I've seen your videos. But yeah. it's, not like, it's not like happening, reoccurring all the time. But that's still not normal. Like that's not a normal way to live your life. Like for people to know you, like because you'll never know how many people know you and don't say anything. Yeah. Like when you're, and because here's like, I would argue that especially with you, more people know you than approach you because obviously (laughs) right like i mean once you get once people know you that approaching you is like it's a laughable proposition to not approach you but like i would it it must be a weird feeling like i thought about this the other day do you ever think about how many photos you're in the background of like when you just people especially in the gym like people are just taking photos all over Yeah, yeah and it's like you ever stop to think how many times like you're just like that guy that the CIA CIA can't find, and they're just like the back of your head all over the place. Yeah, yeah. But it's, I mean, it's got to be. I mean, at least for me, it's an unnerving feeling to be somewhere and just go like, hmm. Like if one person comes up to you, maybe there's five people, maybe there's ten people, maybe there's a hundred people that like know who you are but don't say anything. Like, does yeah. that level of exposure strange for you? No, I mean it's it's not normal. But I mean, coming from the work I did. Before this, I was with someone who that is like their, they can't go anywhere and not be recognized. Right. So I was up by, I was a part of that because I was attached to it. Yeah. So that level of, of being, of being like they're notorious and you're everywhere you go, people stop you, whatever. Like I'll never get to that level. So anything less than that is just like, eh. you know uh, yeah, I never thought of that because that's an interesting calibration tool yeah. because you've seen it at what I would argue to be like the highest level. I don't know if it gets crazier than that. No. So now like social media fitness is kind of like, meh. And it's kind of like, I'm, well, you know me well enough, but like I'm, I'm, I mind my own business and I don't, I'm not like loud. I'm not abrasive. I'm not like the center of attention in a room. Right. So it's just like, it's odd for me to like, sometimes when I catch people who like, maybe they recognize me or whatever, I instantly revert back to like, this guy's got a problem. Like, I'm not like, oh, that guy recognized. I'm not like, oh, obviously he recognizes yeah. me. You know what I mean? It's just like, what the fuck's this guy looking yeah. at? Yeah. Who do you my eyes what for, man? I got this? candy for you? Let's go. Yeah, just like, <laughs> not like, just like I'm kind of like turned on. Like, like I get switched on. Like, what the fuck is like going on? Like, yeah. why are you? And then I'm like, oh, maybe. Maybe. Probably. Maybe. And then yeah. I just let it go. But it's like. Do you find that the image you put out, like, just like putting yourself on the internet and like not playing like a caricature of yourself? allows you a certain level of freedom because you are so like you know straight over the center of the plate pretty raw pretty real like pretty blunt and straightforward that you know you you wouldn't have issues working out and people bothering you i couldn't imagine that that would be something if someone was familiar enough with your content sees you in the gym you're training and they go i know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna talk to him between sets 
because they like do, they do though, but they don't. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. No, I'm not. I mean, I'm not. I'm not here fucking breaking world records out there, right? So I'm not like I'm enjoying my workout. But if someone comes up to me and they like waited for me to like be done and they're like, "Hey, man, can I get a picture of it?" Sure. And then they because you take the picture of them or you say what's up and they they're on their way, right? Yeah. And it's just like it only took five seconds of your day. Just be like, "What's up." How is it that you keep track of like trends in the industry? Because I always feel like the stuff you put out is very much, is it people reaching out to you and asking for your comments on certain things? Are you, you know, I can't see you spending much time on social media. Is it just being in here so often and seeing, because like this place is really the Instagram, this is Instagram concentrate in this place. Yeah, I mean, it's more just stuff that I, I, I see in the gym yeah. and like how people are acting or what they're doing or not necessarily like, specific people but just seeing common trends like guys like loading the leg press and moving at a quarter inch and like th thinking that they're like the toughest baddest motherfucker on the planet because they're doing that right or they're banging weights around or, like just certain things will like trigger me and it'll get me thinking on different paths and i don't pay attention to anything on the internet like i don't watch people's pages half the pe more than half the people that i follow i'm muted sorry if that offends you but <laughs> I just like, I just do my own thing. I've always noticed the people that I mute are, and the reason I have to mute them is because they're so annoying and pedantic that if I unfollow them, they'd somehow know. And then yeah. that would be a conversation. Yeah, I've had that problem. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's such a, it's, it's a level of narcissism that I mean, probably due to the fact that we're not meant to be exposed to that many people just peering through your fucking kitchen window yeah. every day. But well, it's uh, also odd because the people that might have a problem with that They'll physically come up to you and tell you that they're upset that you did that, but you're talking to me. Right. I'm right in front of you. Yeah. So you're my, I'm not virtually your friend or in this make believe world, but like you're talking to me yeah. and that's not enough. No. They'd rather you just be my friend there and I don't even need to speak to you in life. Yeah. It's that's like, really, it's like, dude, I just want to have a collection. You're part of the collection. Get on the shelf. Bitch. <laughs> yeah, like, get on the shelf. Look at my collection of people I know. Just like a true, <laughs> because who's searching other people who follows that? That's what I want to know is like, what is that worth to you? I don't know. That I see your shit. I don't know. Maybe if you notice that, like, you click on somebody's thing and you see that they were following you before and not following you now, yeah. Or something then. But that's that always like take a hard look at yourself. Like, what have I done to yeah. to make this person angry enough or annoyed enough? Because yeah. the the mute button is it's sad that the mute button has to exist. Yeah, that is just like you can't just get people out of your purview. The and worst just, is that fucking. That new feature on Instagram with the notes. Have you seen this? I don't have this. I'm not prolific enough. Oh, man, it's fucking what, can you explain this to me? Do you know what this it's is? It's like a, a way message on like BBM. Oh my, back we're going back. The, we're going all the way back. Or like MSN type. Yeah, of yeah. Like, it's like just a little blurb and it just pops up. So I can put like like Blink-182 lyrics or like Tessa yeah. Hart like in my sign-in <laughs> name? You want. Really? I didn't. It's not even in that. It's just like a little a little its own little category above your messages that says notes. So I can write like happy Friday. Yeah. Sick. Send it out. And I'm going to have a happy What's Friday because Mike told me to. It's like, fuck, man. It's just the most ridiculous shit ever. Because you, you, like, you have, like, Alora's, I'm assuming, helping with this. Yeah, she like, does everything. Okay, all right. Because you're... Like, I run my... I do my own Instagram. I just post whenever I feel like it or the clips she makes for me. I pick and choose which ones I like and I put them out, right? Half the time... It, when she sends me clips, I'm like, did I, f I don't remember even talking about that yeah. or like saying that. I'm blacked out, man. I'm blacked out. Like what? Will Ferrell in, uh, <laughs> in old school. Does the debate? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> What's been like some prevailing trends that just haven't been going away? Like fitness is so transient, but there seems to be some things that just stick around a little bit longer. Like, and not even from like, I don't say good or bad, but maybe from the sense of, you know, if building muscle is the primary goal, like that's your, that's your bread and butter. The what number the one thing that hasn't, that hasn't gone anywhere, but it's evolved to like complete nonsense now is this like idea that, that weight equals muscle. Yeah. And it's like, it's always been there and, and it has truth to it. There, there's truth to that, right? And progressive overload, there's truth to that, but progressive overload and like this idea that weight has become like directly correlated with muscle growth has been dumbed down so much that it's just about weight. Yeah. There's no other factors. And then when you argue with people like, well, you know, I'm talking about rep ranges and time under tension or whatever they want to talk about, but they're, but everything they talk about is simply about weight going up. Yeah. Nothing else. It'd be great power lifters. Yeah. Like that's what I mean. Like, and it's, there's no division. 
I don't know who created the blend. Powerlifters brought in bodybuilders, but I think it's more that powerlifters, I mean, bodybuilders were looking at powerlifters and got pulled over. Yeah. And then tried to, tried to like mimic powerlifting principles and like bring them into bodybuilding speak and like create this hybrid, right? Which is like. How much do you think Dorian Yates, because like Dorian Yates to me, when I looked at like the beating the log book back in the day, mm-hmm. that was like the first guy that I had heard of that was like, right, this is how we're going to go in and we're just going to do five more pounds or one more rep. And then it was just yeah. sort of like this simple Sisyphean that's, that's push like it uphill sort of thing. People need to understand though, like that's, that's how his mind worked. Right. And that's how he was taught by like Mike Menser or whoever guys he looked up to. He, so he adopted that and it worked for him. But who's to say that if he adopted another style, it wouldn't have been just as good. Yeah. Like, would his physique have suffered? Would he, have, or maybe it would have been better. Maybe he wouldn't have torn his bicep or his pec, whatever that weird was, right? Yeah. So it's like, you can argue like, so-and-so does this and look at this. Yeah, but so-and-so could also do another training style and probably look just the same. Yeah. Or, or even better. look at someone else who does, like look at a Dexter Jackson or yeah. something like that. Like I always compare Dexter and Ronnie. The year Ronnie had his sixth back surgery, Dexter won all the, all the Arnold's. He won all. He swept. He was forty six. Uh, Coleman was fifty. Well, you never see. You don't see any videos of Dexter Jackson hitting eight hundred pound squats yeah. in a squat suit. Right. But he looks fucking fantastic. Yeah. And he looks insane. It's odd to me that the we've moved from progress photos to PRs yep. in a sport that's the visual. metric is yeah the metric is visual purely visual sport but it's, it's all plates per side it's yeah. like there's not a coefficient when you're on stage of like yeah his back double bicep is a little soft but his single arm lap pull down is yeah. seven plates per side or like it make it compensates for your score so like you're behind on points but mm. you deadlifted more than that guy so you're going yeah there's a little coefficient the, there yeah you <laughs> win the power a power building competition i think is something i think they should have that it's in our future like it's super totals like people between olympic weightlifting and powerlifting they'll go like clutch snatch clean and jerk bench squat and dead mm. I think bodybuilding is headed to some sort of Nautilus row machine with a side chest. Like yeah. that's going to be somehow. I think too that like a lot of these new school guys or guys that are coming up in bodybuilding or this new generation, it's like they've they've tried to, they understand that it's hard work, but they're like always trying to hack their way around hard work. Yeah. So I want to like, I understand I need to like work hard, but like that's over here. But look how smart I can be about what I do. Right. And look how smart I can, like, make myself. Like, I put this band on here, and then I drop my weight this much percentage, and then I do this, and I do that. It's just, like, cool, but that all falls in the hard work category. Right. It doesn't displace it. It doesn't replace it. And it doesn't, like, like the other thing the other day when I was posting about the muscle stim shit. Oh, like, my God. I, fucking shit. Can you explain that to us? Because, I, I mean, I don't understand it, but I'm a little further away from it than you are. I what don't is, understand it either. So, That's why I'm, like, completely baffled by it. It's like if I'm in, a, in, a, in bodybuilding, we're concerned not just about the contracting part of the lift, like eccentric portion of the lift or the concentric portion of the lift. We're concerned about eccentric as well. So we want to, like, be calm in the negative, get stretch, get depth, stretch the muscle, work through the full range, right? So you're going to put a pad on me that contracts me into a locked state. And yeah, I'm still going to get the negative, but it's like, it's basically tensing my muscle and firing it so that I can't move it optimally. Yeah. It doesn't move through a range. And then you're like, because I feel it, it's working. It's the same analogy as like, if I hold a tricep extension down and I flex my tricep and just hold it there for five minutes, I feel my fucking tricep. It's going to get burning like crazy and it's going to hurt. But when I put it down, has anything happened? Yeah. It's like, no, I just contracted my muscle. And that's a part of what we're doing, but it's not all of what we're doing. Right. And you, you know could I mean? and you could argue that, especially in bodybuilding, that that muscle damage on like a true lengthening. Yeah. Well, and we look at this like in studies around muscle hypertrophy, muscles when trained in lengthened positions, like with exercise in lengthened positions, seem to favor better hypertrophy results. Mm-hmm. Like that's the argument against a hip thrust. Hip thrust is like not really the best because it's not really the longest or the most loadable. No. Right? If something can be loaded or something can be lengthened. But that's then, like I'm saying, all these exercises and all these like techniques of lifting that people are doing or be obsessed with lift, it's all about just getting to point B. Mm. It's boom. Yeah, we're there. We've arrived. Boom. It's like, but the whole, that rest of that, that down and then that back up is what we're concerned about in this range. I don't care about the top. I don't care about the dead bottom where there's nothing happening, right? Yeah. I care about the elastic tension that I have throughout the lift, right? Especially for bodybuilders. But it's like everyone's just like, they've gone stupid. And the best part is that there's people doing this stim shit 
you watch them train themselves, they're not using it. Right. Why the fuck aren't you using it? Yeah. I don't train. I train people exactly how I train myself. If you see me in the gym, I'm doing the same movements, same style of movement, same lifts. I'm not fucking doing different shit and then coming up to you and being like, hey, try this. Yeah. With the, with the little like. It's like if you believe in it so much, have that, have that cart with you, put it on you everywhere you go and train and show people that it works. Yeah. And I just never see it. Like if it works for, if it works for the best in the world, there might be some applicability downstream. But I don't see a single top competitor using well, that method. They, then they argue with, they're like, oh, there is top guys using it. Like top young guys now that are coming up. It's like, yeah, but they're using it right now. Right. So that's cool. Where where were they back what then? What did they use to be a top? How guy? did they get to this park? Yeah. They didn't use that shit. Yeah. So they're just using it now for like these gimmicky, like, oh, it'll make you 1% better. I'll do the 1% thing. It makes me 1% better. I'll take it. It's like, or you could just keep doing what you're doing. Would you say most of your training is volume driven? Yeah. Like in training with you, like that's, I've done, I did more reps in one chest workout oh. seven months ago with you. My chest is still sore. <laughs> but it's like, what is the metric? Like how can volume be the thing that we measure? Like what, how do you see the shift changing away from load to volume? It's, it's just people have to understand like the feeling that you're chasing when lifting for bodybuilding is a pump. Yeah. And like Schwarzenegger said it back in pumping iron. Yeah. And no one listened. Right. He said he's coming in the gym. He's coming in. Like, <laughs> Maybe he, that's so why like, they didn't listen. No, but I was like, but he said it in a, in a way for you. Like you can't forget that he right. said it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So he's talking about the pump, the pump, the pump. They're all talking about it. Yeah. And it's just like, get in there and get as pumped as I can and leave. And it's always been known that your weight, you need to increase your weight. Right. It's never been, ha it's never had to been called something. Yeah. I don't need to call it something. I'm going to naturally get stronger. Therefore it's going to take more weight, more resistance. I can lift more weight. It goes up. Right. So yeah, if I'm, when I started, when I was 15, I'm only bench pressing hundred pounds. When I get up to 25, I'm benching 405. Right. That whole time was like me going up and lift. It's not workout to workout. It's not like every workout I need to beat my previous workout. If that mentality is your mentality, you're like headed on a road to nowhere. Yeah. Cause and that's going to stop. And then if you will get stronger, if the, if the thing you're chasing is a pump, yeah. you won't be able to catch a pump with 135. Anymore. No. So he's like, all right, I guess 185. Yeah, you're going to have to stress the muscle, right? You're yeah. going to have to create some type of resistance that's eliciting you having to fire that muscle, work that muscle through a range, right? Who were favorite bodybuilders that like maybe inspired this style of training with that you followed when you were, or followed, probably a weird word, but like that you were into when you were competing? And then who do you think now is like, okay, I like this guy's training style. Like he's got a good understanding or conceptualization of like how building muscle work rather than just lifting. Um, when I was younger, I, like I followed Dorian. So Dorian was like my favorite. So I lifted like Dorian when I was coming up, but it just led to like, I also, like I also didn't know what I was chasing. Right. I was chasing strength back then. Cause I came from a football background and I just power strength. These was power output. I'll be more explosive on the field and I'll be like a fucking monster. Right. So I had that in me, so I've done that style of lifting. So people that knock what I say about volume or stuff, I've done all the stuff that you've done. Yeah. And this is what works for me. And this is what's a, like caused the least amount of injury, least amount of problems with my body. Like, no, like nothing's happened to me since I've been lifting volume, right? Yeah. So it's like I transitioned to that on my own, understanding that this is what guys were doing, but I wasn't doing it. So I'm like, let's go try and do this and see if it works. And I did my own thing and. When I met Darren, my former trainer who passed away, he just instilled that a lot in me too. Like everything was just volume. Yeah. You can still go heavy, he says, but like let's get the volume up. Let's get the sets. Let's get the reps up to like a range that you're not used to. So really work that muscle. Right? Is there anyone like currently competitive or active competitors that you look at their training? If you look at their training at all and be like, okay, like this is someone who might has you know a little bit more of a finger on the pulse not that whatever anyone else is doing is bad if you're at the pro level clearly whatever you're doing is working for you yeah i mean but like that style of high volume and like building muscle rather than just lifting weight i don't follow nick walker close enough to know exactly how he trains but i appreciate his movement style and like yes he's lifting heavy to someone to an onlooker it's heavy right but to him it's not right it's yeah, up, yeah. he's controlling all the weights he's like manipulating the weight the, he's lifting the weight the weight's not lifting him like he's not uneasy or on off balance so he's a good guy to watch and then a lot of another guy who's very good but he doesn't compete anymore is brandon ray oh wow yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i've heard brandon that Ray's name in a while really good 
like really, really good, man. What do you like? Because your cueing style is is different. Like you always, and that was the thing I noticed when I trained with you is most people cue, they don't cue the hands. I, that was one thing that always stuck with me is how you cue the hands and the head. Yeah. Those were like the two things that always stuck with when you cue someone. Yeah. Like you have a very different focal point yeah. of movement. What, what, how do you assess, like when you're looking at someone's technique, like what is the, what are the things you see faulty? Like what, where are people focus or where is their focus going wrong? And how do you bring them back to like this more fluid movement pattern that you are always kind of pushing? Like everyone always seems really rigid when they train with you, when they start. Yeah. And then you're always trying to integrate like. Yeah. Well, I just think natural movement and like sequences of movements are what's important, right? Like you come, you deal with a lot of athletes. Like there's no athlete out there who's stiff. Right. If they're doing some type of dynamic sport, it yeah. could be golf. You're not stiff. You have to have like rotation. You have to like be able to transfer weight. So it's like every sport in the world, anything that's active or athletic requires you to understand sequences of movements. And yeah, when you break down something, like if you're working on someone's like, let's say their sprinting gait or like how high, like how they're sprinting, you're going to like do stuff with them understanding like knee drive or like drive off the ground, like stomp. But like you're not going to have them run down the track. You're going to have them work on those like those little things you're working on. Yeah. That's like apply it. Right. So, okay, it's getting better. Let's do some more. Let's reinforce it. Apply it. Because they have to go run eventually, right? Right. So it's the same thing with bodybuilding. It's like, but someone's come into bodybuilding and said, like, we got to be as stiff as possible to work muscles. To isolate muscles, you have to get as stiff as possible. Right. It's like, who the fuck said that? I don't know who it was. But whoever it was or whoever the people were, they seem to, they brainwashed an entire industry. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, this is, this is what you do. And you can talk to anybody. You can talk to, like, an average gym goer like a competitive bodybuilder, and they have the same thing. Oh, I was always told, don't rock, mm. don't move. Yeah. It's like the well, lat pull down was the first one. Yeah. And then they're like, <laughs> and then they're like, but whenever I do this, it kills my shoulders or it kills my back. I just figured, like, you know, every time I do back, my fucking elbows hurt, whatever the fuck it is. And you're just like, so obviously it's not working, right? It's not supposed to be painful or like you got to go through the pain and then it, it's going to happen. It's like, no, move properly. Yeah. Like understand how your body moves and like how you can drive into like a, a muscle you're trying to contract and then you'll understand everything, right? If you had, if you had to do a list of like fuck, marry, kill exercises. Uh. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm really interested on in the kill. So maybe let's save that one last, but like. If you had to go through and just kind of like categorize. It, dep it depends on, honestly, it depends on the person, right? Like, cause I just. For you, personally. I, for me personally, uh, I would kill deadlifts because I personally hate deadlifts. Okay, fair enough. I'm a horrible deadlift. I'm not designed for that. Uh, fuck, Mary kill. I'm just like a, I'm. I'm a big fan of any type of like rowing move, chest supported row. Okay. So that would be a Mary. Okay, that's a long term. That's a that's a ride or die. Yeah, but it's just like, and then chest maybe for a chest press or something like that. Just any like any good machine press, like those prime presses out there. Yeah. That like create motion. Even a hoist press. Do you know hoist? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How they like push it pushes you back. Yeah. It understands like that you're. Ex you're falling back and extending yeah. trying to get like, it's the idiot's guide to lifting. Right. Like, so that's, that's like, good for a night. Yeah. yeah. But if we got one of those, like, all right, all right. for my, me personally, I would kill deadlifts. I would never, I'll never do a deadlift again in my life. Now, do you like for your clients, is that something from a muscle building perspective? Obviously it has, a, it has more utility in powerlifting because it's one of those sports or it's one of the, it's a component of the sport. Is it something that, because it falls into a more like loadable exercise, it's not necessarily like a concentrated volume movement. Is it something that you see in, in one of your programs a lot, or is it just across the board like maybe a tool better used to just overall build strength? Yeah, I just I just don't think. I mean, if a bodybuilder has a back, if someone has a background in it and they're very comfortable in that lift and they have a lot of experience with it, yeah. they've been taught by good people. I'm not going to teach you it because I'm not a good person to teach it. Right, that's fair. But like, if you have a background in it and you're comfortable with it and you're constantly progressing in it there's no injuries and stuff then do it yeah do you know what i mean but a lot of people who are like you would you can attest to this like a lot of people in the gym who come to you and they're like i want to get bigger back and they're just arbitrarily being like i do deadlifts right it's like well yeah i guess but like how about we just learn how you learn how to move your back or yeah. arch your back or retract your shoulders or lift your sternum like this is stuff that will actually 
help you isolate your back muscles. When you put stuff out there, I mean, you have a finger on the pulse enough to know, like, okay, this is going to turn heads. This is going to land. This is going to, this is going to be contentious. Of all the things that you've put out, what are, what's the one thing? Like, if we had to stir up some shit on the internet right now, and we just took our phones out, we went into the gym. What is the thing that people seem to have the greatest emotional attachment to that you're like, guys, we might be missing the point here. People are really attached to like what they do for lifts. Right. So if I tell you, I mean, you're sitting here right now and I'm like, you love spaghetti and I hate spaghetti. Fuck you. And I'm like, spaghetti's I'll kill fucking you. I'm going to DM you throw. and tell you I'm going to fucking show yeah. up at your house. You're not going to be like, fuck you, man. Spaghetti yeah. rules. <laughs> yeah, rule. You'll just be like, oh, he doesn't like spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. Like, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's like everyone in there, like, it's like I'm making generalized comments about different movements or whatever and just talking about how people are butchering them and they're like, so what the fuck you saying, man? That that lift's fucking great. I do that all the time. It's like, since you do it, I'm insulting you personally. Yeah. Like, are you mentally all right? No. Like, you're not, obviously. We're not. But it's just like, to hear like a generalized comment and then take that so personally. I, dude, that's my favorite thing. It's people, like, how do you do that? People jumping in front of the bullet. Like, dog, I'm not, I, that's, when, when people take criticism so seriously that they and themselves it, inject themselves into the situation. Yeah, like it's like, dude. so attached to like, this is what I do, so don't ever talk bad about it. It's like, you, everyone bench presses, man. Right. A good amount of people do some variation of a bench press, whether it's dumbbell press or so I could be talking to everybody, but you've you've took it to be like, so you're saying I shouldn't bench press? Well, fuck you, man, because bench press, my bench press is this and my bench is that. It's like, okay. I can preface the mental state of someone that gets aggressive in your DMs as clinically unwell. Because it's like, where, dude, if this ends up in real life, this is yeah. not going to end well for you. So you best, like to defend the honor of your bench press to your imminent death. Like, or or to, like the one that really pissed people off was T-bar rows. And I said, oh, yeah, I I got DMs about that. I was like, take it up with him. Here's you'll be at the gym because I just don't see a benefit in them because, like I said, like if someone has a good has great movement and great mobility and understands how to target areas of their back on a T-bar row, do it. But most people don't. So, like, let's just get rid of that for now yeah. because it's fucking – all of you are hunched over and fucking pulling this thing up and, like, clanking it off the fucking stopper. If you're doing it right, how the fuck is it hitting the stopper? Yeah. How is it hitting the top? Yeah. But you just hear that clink and you got four plates and then you clink and nothing's happening, right? This is the people I'm talking to. I'm not talking to, like, experienced guys who are, like, very knowledgeable what they do and under very great body awareness, understand how to, like, where to pull – understand everything i'm talking to like the people that are watching they're just zombies like yeah put more weight on the t-bar row because branch warren put four plates on there and fucking rock the thing around yeah. it's like yeah branch warren did do that but branch Warren, all you're also not branch warren yeah you'll never be branch warren and he all i mean not to just sidebar like when you talk about transferring weight watching him train he like i remember watching him do front races with like i don't know 120 yeah, yeah. there's some crazy shit but like his ability to transfer weight from like his left foot to his right shoulder yeah, yeah. And he's just sort of like rock back and forth. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it works. Like you said, if you have the movement yeah. pattern. And that's why like, people like all this rocking. Like if you watch, J- if you watch Cutler do uh, under underhand pull downs. Yeah. He's fucking, he's riding a fucking roller coaster. But if you look at the line of his elbow and the line of his hand, then the pull into the lat, he's directly on his lat. Yeah. Just because he's moving a shit ton. He's got to move a shit ton to get these massive shoulders to get anywhere near behind him. Right. To lift his chest up. If he sat up tall, he would literally crunch forward and literally and be in like a and be literally doing an ab exercise. Yeah. So he has to get that momentum to be able to lift the rib cage and rock up, right? Yeah. So people are like, "Oh, that's the way Jay did." It's like you're not Jay, man. Definitely. Jay not. knows where his lat is. He can put his hand on this table right now and engage his lat, and pull the table with his lat. Right. You can't do that. So stop looking at these guys and being like, "That's what they did. I'm going to do it." Yeah. It's like fucking jesus man what has been the thing that you've got the most positive response to i mean i have an idea of what it might be but is just, there people are like they, they appreciate the fact that i'm honest and that i just say it how it is and the tripod gate yeah, yeah. and i'm calling it tripod gate <laughs> yeah it's like i mean that's funny seems... too because people like if anyone who knows me i'm like i'm not telling anyone to do that. No, I'm not telling you to go over and kick someone's fucking th- like thousand dollar camera off their tripod. Like, it's a fucking joke, man. Yeah. Like, and it's like you guys took it so seriously. They even put a clip in of 300 at the end, so like you know I'm fucking like it's tongue in cheek. Like yeah. I'm like, especially yeah, if someone shit. shits in your way, you should tell them like, 
can you move this, man? I'm trying to work out. Because yeah. there is kids, you'll see them. They'll put a fucking tripod, like, against a machine. Or, like, you'll be doing an exercise and they'll set up beside you. They're not even aware that they're doing it. Yeah. They're not doing it maliciously. Like, oh, fuck this guy. Like, they're just so into what they're doing. They're, like, interfering with, like, the gym and people in it. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, tell the person, like, yo, man, like, put it over there. Yeah. Like, it's a minefield. Yeah. Like, and this goes to the, the question earlier, like, do you ever think about how many times you're just in the background of a pitcher? It's like the number of tripods. I try and move around like it's a laser field in a bank <laughs> vault. I'm just like slinking up against walls, just trying to like shift past them. Yeah. Do you see, a, have, since you've started you know, being more active on social media the last couple of years, have you started to see trends improve for the better? Like obviously that's why you put out content, I'm assuming. But are, are you hopeful? Like, are we going to make it, Mike? Is the industry lost? Is it too far gone? Oh boy! <laughs> I don't know. Man. Like the, the thing is, a lot of the people that re like the, my stuff resonates with them because you can see your metrics. Obviously, right? Is like older people, like yeah. guys my like twenty five and thirty five and up, right? So it's not like it's like thirty five in there. Like guys who've been lifting, like came up in my area of, era of lifting and are still lifting and kind of like looking for someone that still thinks the way they think because these fucking kids nowadays like they act like a fucking a dumbbell fly is like a brand new thing yeah like oh dumbbell fly and like they demonstrated like it's been around man yeah. we know what the fuck that is please stop demonstrating it please stop showing us like your stupid little workout especially these girls on tiktok who are in their fucking like alpha elite or whatever like they're like jumpsuits. It's all one color. Yeah, it's just like I got my shorts and everything, and I'm doing like dumbbell curl. It's like, who are you motivating with that? Mm. Like, what are you? What good are you doing? You're just doing it for you, right? And that's fine, but like, you don't need to film it. Yeah, there's a mirror. Just stare in it. Do you feel like there's a generation coming underneath that might? Because things always just are cyclical, right? Like, I I'm very hopeful. I was in Australia a few weeks ago with my buddy and he's like, dude, it's the best thing ever. His, his backyard backs onto a park and he goes every Friday at like 4 p.m. These six kids come together. They mustn't be older than 10 years old. Uh, they put on boxing gloves and they just beat the living <laughs> shit out of each other. <laughs> it's like, I'm hopeful that like there's going to be a shift away like th with TikTok and yeah, this, this Instagram, TikTok, YouTube thing, I'm confident that there's like a wave of kids coming underneath you who are looking at you going like, no, 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 this, this is it. These older people, like these teenagers or whatever, these are losers. I want to be more like this guy. Yeah, I mean, I hope so. There's like, there's one guy on uh, Instagram. He's on TikTok too. His name's Sal Money. He's like blue hair and like spiky hair. Okay. And he's got like a whole like, look to him like a persona right but the kid is smart yeah and he understands like this is like i'm showing you like this is kind of my thing like this is how i dress with the crazy hair and whatever but the, the kid's training what he's like telling these younger kids who are probably following him or his age he's giving them good advice yeah. and he like follows a lot of my stuff he shouts me out a lot but he's just like if kids like that keep coming around and, and letting these kids below know it's like it's not about prs it's not about this it's not about that especially in bodybuilding, it's like we'll be in a good place. Do you see a change in the way bodybuilding is like currently structured at all? Like, you know, this classic, there's 212 and men's open, primarily men's physique and all that. But like, do you see them doing away with like the current structure? Like maybe just going back to old school bodybuilding where it was like, it was all bodybuilding. There was no classic. There's no. just tall and short men's. There's just too much, there's too much like, there's too much behind classic right now. Yeah. Classic's taking over. Really? Yeah. I think. So you think? Because uh, because classic is like, how do I say this? It's like the fuck boy's dream. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, oh, Jesus Christ. So it's like, you know, <laughs> not to say that the guys competing in classic, they're not fuck boys. I love how you have to say that though. No, but it, like, cause I do, cause I'll get upset. Like, uh. like Bumstead and like, um, is it rough diesel that kid? Terrence. Terrence. Yeah. He's like, these are fucking phenomenal. Yeah. Wild. Way better bodybuilders than I ever would ever could be or ever was. But it's like, I'm just saying that these guys who have these types of physiques who are kind of a little smaller, more streamlined, like more aesthetic. That's what these kids who are, you can see them in the gym. They're Chris Bumstead, like wannabes. Yeah. They wear short shorts. They cut their hair in a mullet. They wear like the long sleeve 
super long sleeve t-shirt. The reemergence of the mustache has been really yeah. concerning to me. So it's like these. This is what these type of kids who you see like infesting gyms. That's those are the guys they're looking at. There's no more of this like, oh man, I gotta look like fucking Dorian. I gotta look like Ronnie. Yeah, those guys are gone. They're like, I want to look pretty, but I want to be jacked as fuck. Yeah, it's rare to see because that was it when I was a kid. Like, and because you can't infest a gym with weird kids that want to be excluded monsters. Yeah. Like, because there's just not a lot of them by yeah. the, the definition of what they're trying to emulate. Yeah. So, like, the hoodie, big sweatpants, hide in the corner, like, drag your big water bottle around sort of thing. Like, those kids are so rare now. And I don't understand the, when bodybuilding became, or at least training became a team sport. Like, I've noticed with you that you train solo a lot. Like, you'll train your clients, and then you'd be like, you're almost like Bradley Cooper in the hangover when he leaves school before he goes on the little <laughs> yeah. vacation. And like you'll train your clients and they're friends of yours and they're great people. And it's as if you go, workout's over, you're done, I do not know you, you do not exist. And then <laughs> yeah. you go train. Because uh, what comes in a gaggle? Geese. There's, is it geese? Ducks. Ducks? There's like packs, <laughs> of, like packs of wolves, but there's gaggles of definitely flocks true. of sheep, gaggle of geese. Or hens maybe. Hens? Well, there's I I use the term gaggle for kids under the age of twenty five because they always come in like packs or gaggles of yeah. like seven people. They wear toques uh, for American friends. That's beanies, which sounds like a stupid word. Stop using. <laughs> and they wear like stringers and sweatpants, and yep. it's like uh, you gotta have the uniform on. You're not gonna because the thing is like, from when I grew up and I started training at I don't know Lundy when we started training 15, 16, me you Graham Skelton. Riverside, he was there for my first workout. Yeah. Yeah. He's been down since the jump. <laughs> and it's like if there was 10 guys that were serious into training, one of them still trains now. Yeah. Right? But now there's 50 or 60 people who are serious into training. And I would argue in 10 years that there'll still just be one guy still training. Like yeah. the motivations behind training right now seem very... It's, it's the motivations behind training right now are strictly for content. Strictly for... And I could say that about a lot of like even competitive bodybuilders. Yeah. Like, do you really like this place? Or are you just doing it because like you're fairly good at it? It requires little effort other than you just move weights. Like you come here and you lift and you're done. Right. So it's like, I don't understand your motivation. Whereas like when I came up, I didn't, I mean, guys before me, like we weren't obsessed with like what was going to happen as a result, the attention we were going to get as a result of doing what we're doing in the gym. We went to the gym because we loved being there. And I still work out every day. I don't film my fucking workouts. Yeah. The only workout that you'll see of mine that's on film is if Alora's following me around. But I don't post my workouts. I don't take selfies. I don't fucking talk about what I did that day or like, you know what I mean? It's my time. So I'm just doing that on video because it's like I want to show people like how to move in certain things. So if I want to show shoulder stuff, then come and do shoulders with me. But even when I'm with Laura, I'm like, okay, I'm done now. Go over yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. What is the rest? I mean, not to get like a too far outside of bodybuilding, but I think people are really interested in you. And the only conduit they get to you at is like when Laura puts a camera in your face, you're training, <laughs> you say some shit that pisses people off and then you leave. What does the rest of your day look like when you're not here? Because you have like a very... Uh, intense, very passionate view about everything in here. But it is that Bradley Cooper, like, you headed to your truck, I don't even bother to say bye to you. Like, he's already <laughs> so far checked out. I'm like, just let him go. Yeah. He's going to just peel out of the parking lot and he's gone. Like, no, I just like it back. To, like, my life is pretty, I used to have a lot more hectic of a life when I was doing security and running around all over the place. So I was always on the go then. So I'm used to just, like, moving from one thing to the next. And, like, I'm doing this now, now I'm doing this. It's like, I'm on, I'm off, I'm on, I'm off, right? So when I'm in the gym, it's just like I'm doing what I'm doing. When I'm done, I'm going to be Mike outside the gym, so going home. Do you feel like that simplicity of lifestyle would be something you'd land on if you didn't have such a crazy life work and security? Like, is, I guess my question No, I've is, always been like that. Like, even when I played football, like, in college back in the day, when I was done practice, like, do not fucking bother me yeah. about football. Do not talk to me about football. I'm off. Like, do you Do you anticipate a point where... Like, do you miss the crazy lifestyle of always having things or are you relishing in this? So it's not, you're done, done. Like you're not going back on. I actually get anxiety thinking about doing it again. Really? No way. Like when I was in the, when I was in the midst of it, it's like, 
you don't have time to think about it really and you're just living the life so it's like you're a part of it but now that i've had time to like i've been forced to step back and kind of like reevaluate what's going on and be away from that thing it's like the thought of going back is like not a fucking chance really not a chance now for anyone are you the only person i would go back for is the person that i worked for oh not for me okay. yeah all right damn it's the person right. that i worked for yeah but like i there's there's things in my life that won't allow that to take place right so like if someone else came up to me and was like i want you to come work I'm like nope not a fucking chance really like, not a fucking chance so you don't have a life right like you're 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 living someone else's life yeah and people don't people don't really understand that until they do it it's not like if you don't want to go too fucking bad right. you're going it's like you don't want to do this then you're fired yeah you don't show up to this you're fired if you haven't slept in fucking 24 hours and your client wants to go here till enough for another 12 hours get the fuck up and go there you know what i mean so it's like people don't understand like they think that security life or being a like close protection for someone is like glamorous there's a lot of cool things about it like you go all over the world like been to australia twice for like months at a time you know what it's like there it's awesome i've been everywhere like south africa i've been all these places but it's like i'd rather be nowhere than right here like at my house yeah like like at all now like there's has to be inherent dangers with that job yeah there's like dangers with any job right <laughs> it, okay <don't, laughs> i mean tripping over a tripod versus dealing with some of the shit you must have dealt with like yeah your biggest danger is like i hope well, that's, that's I another can... thing like i meant to say this to you is like when you were telling me the other day like you're like you're still here you're working too much it's like you don't know what that is right like, you do because you work hard but i'm saying you don't understand like where i've came or i've come from right this is me doing what i want to do right so i choose to be here yeah. so i could leave anytime i want but I'm used to working so hard that this is like nothing to me. It's, I'm not working here. I'm just show, I'm work, show up, I work out, I train a few people. I don't have to think about it because it's just what I do. Like, I don't, it's not like I have to be like, oh, I gotta get prepared for this day of clients. Like, it's like, do you wanna train? Okay, that's fucked up, that's fucked up. Let's fix this, let's fix that. Like, it's, it's easy for me to see and identify, right? So I don't feel like I'm doing anything. Like, I don't feel like I'm at work. Yeah. So it's like when I'm here and I'm making money and I'm, doing what i like to do it's just like eh. it's like and what would i be doing like anyway yeah like i'd be at home like if i'm not here i'm at home do you miss aspects of like previous job yeah i miss like the i love the people that i was working for i i like them as people like i enjoyed their company and like the guys i worked directly with doing security i had a lot of fun with yeah but it's like anything right things just kind of evolve like i miss football too but do i want to play football again no right I f the thought of taking a hit, <laughs> the thought of like engaging with an O lineman, yeah, just no. in practice right now, yeah. I'd be like, oh, God. <laughs> I do, I got one rep, yeah. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, you just take things for what they were, and then you, because that that life doing that has taught me a lot about going like into what I'm doing now. Yeah. So like I like we talked about before, I've seen, I've seen hysteria and like people, like literally thinking that this person is a god do you know what i mean to like like you can see in their face like they're like i've seen people that i know personally when i've been out and i'd be like when you see me or you get introduced to the person be fucking normal please yeah, be cool it's just a person just be cool he's a cool guy you're a fucking and it's and you see them as something it's like it's like this fever building and i'm like hey man and you're like what the fuck can i get a picture it's like jesus Christ, bro. Like, what's wrong with you man it's like they can't help themselves, right? So it's like that that whole environment and like also just being like like being in massive crowds and like in situations that could turn dangerous or like you know what I mean like being swarmed by people. It kind of like desensitizes you to like I ran like two people in the gym being like, Hey man, are you Mike? I'm like, yeah. What's up? Yeah. Like, it, oh. I never I honestly cause like I know both worlds. Like oh I knew your involvement in that other world. Yeah. But I never considered the contrast between like most people in fitness. They're the pinnacle is like going to an expo. Yeah. Go to an it's expo. Like a fucking nightmare. There's a line. Well, it's like it must be nothing. Like that's oh. that's. I'm actually calmer. I'm actually calmer in crowds than I am. Like I'm a little more. If if I had to like be honest, I'm a little more on edge when there's less people around and like my surroundings are like I don't know the variables are weird. Yeah. Whereas in a crowd, you know what you're going to get. Right. Like, and you know that like 
90 percent of those people 95 percent of those people are just fans and they're like you're just trying to keep like save them from themselves because they're just losing it and you'll be able to pick out like you in a crowd like that you can pick out who's fucked up really yeah you can tell come on because so you can be like this guy's it's gonna literally be like it's problem. literally like a movie a lot of the time in the sense that the person's like shifting like they're moving they're moving weird like you'll see them one spot you'll see them another spot and their facial expressions are the same they're not excited like everyone else so it's very easy to see right no shit so you can tell like who's being a weirdo so you can you can tell like okay like all you are just like wallpaper yeah. it's like i'm looking at the bro- wallpaper of bricks and then there's one black brick that i can't stop staring at no way because it doesn't fit in right really Whereas, like, if you're out, if you're just like randomly out at like in public walking or at a restaurant or whatever, you can like the variables are different because there's so many people around that you can't keep account for, right? Right. There's so there's so many people acting a certain way yeah. that it just allows the outliers to pop out. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. Now, do you do you have a hard time breaking yourself of that? Like, for example, I was a bouncer in a nightclub. Obviously, like nowhere near the bullshit you must have had yeah. to put up with. But like, I still, when I see strobe lights, I'm like, someone's gonna get punched in the head. Because <laughs> every time the beat drops and I was at Mint in Windsor, someone got punched in the head. It was yeah. just like, it was just like a flip book yeah. of like, like you just watch a guy just. Poof, poof, no, it's just poof, like, I, I have a heart. I can go out and party sometimes. I don't like nightclubs at all. Like, I, you won't find me in a nightclub. I'll go to like a day party or like a pool party or things like that that are more relaxed environments. But like, if I'm in a nightclub, I'm like on. Yeah. Even if I'm fucking like drinking or partying, like I'm aware of everything. Were you like that before you got to know? I would imagine there's a certain, uh, yeah. there's a certain personality type that gets drawn to that line of work. Yeah. Just as I worked in, I did bouncing for so long too, prior to that. And just understanding like one, this city's fucked. Like this city's getting very bad, right? Really? Yeah. Like there was shooting at EFS on the weekend, two people inside the club. Well, that's not good. So there's like shit like that happening all the time. And like these kids that are this is like so far off the no table. bring it man this, this kids, is what people these want. kids are like these kids nowadays and it's all over the it's all over the world it's not just toronto but they have little value for life mm. so like say me and you are two shady guys we want to fucking let's get him we want to fucking whack him bring it on kyle you don't have to do anything we just fucking find some kid who maybe no maybe a guy we know knows we don't even know him like we'll give you two thousand dollars go fucking shoot him in the head what? They'll go. Really? They'll do it for less, probably. That's crazy. They're fucked. I don't need to know. Just so they can be like, yeah, I'm a shooter. I'm a this. I'm a that. I'm a fucking badass guy. I, I'm crazy, right? And these kids will do it. They don't have any value. Like, literally don't care. Like, it's fucking retarded. That's strange. And you can tell, like, these kids who they are because, like, there's a guy in Toronto. He got shot. I forget the guy's name, but you see it on CCTV outside a building. He's walking up to his car, like, doesn't have any fucking clue what's about to happen to him and this car fucking peels up and these kids fucking pop out of the back seat and one in the front seat shooting they're both shooting at him boom 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 just unloading on him he gets hit they shoot him like they shoot at him like 20 some odd times and he didn't die what because they're shooting like this yeah and they're just shooting anywhere like shooting anywhere and then they take off and they peel off right and the fucking guy you see him after he like turns over and he like grabs his phone and he's like laying in his car like calling 911. No shit. It's like, it's like these kids will do anything and they pro kids probably got paid like nothing or they just got told to do it by somebody. Yeah. And it's like that's the kind of shit so when I go out like I don't have problems with people and I don't I don't have enemies. I would Dude, like you think. have the heavyweight belt. Yeah, yeah. Like you go out in public, you're the guy with yeah, the so like my mentality is like if if you're going to come at me on the internet and say weird shit I know what weird shit is. Yeah. So, like, if you're really about that, like, I'm going to be aware of what you're doing. I'm not fucking clueless. So, if I'm out in public, like, if I were into an expo again, and I have the notoriety that I have or people or whatever, I know there's weirdos coming out of the woodwork. Yeah. And I'll know who they are. So, it was like, <laughs> it's obvious, right? And these people, like, they'll they'll come up to you and they'll say, like, they'll say, like, they'll lead into something to, to like, get you to, like, clue in that it's them. Like, they'll just say, like, I left a comment for you one time. You remember, you're like... That is the strangest thing in the world. You're like, what? Do you want to buy my socks or not? Get the fuck out of here. It's just, like, odd, right? It's like, you're coming at someone who, like, my mind works differently than yours, right? So I'm I'm automatically going to think that you're you're a possible threat to me. I'm not going to assume that... I don't assume that everyone around me likes me. Yeah. So, and I think that more people, like, the world's getting crazier. More people should be like that, right? 
not that they should walk around guarded all the time or be pissed off, but it's just like, be aware that there are some fucking weird people out there, man. Do you, with the notoriety, obviously building in the gym with what you do for a living, yeah. are you at all, and obviously not here, I wouldn't imagine, but like, are you on guard in here? Like, cause this place has a turnover rate. People are flying in, but for the most part, like you're, I would imagine, oh. do you ever feel unsafe? That's a hilarious question. Cause you're such a capable person. No, I just like, I'm just hyper aware of things, right? It's funny because people say like when I'm doing videos, they can see my eyes darting. Yeah. I don't know my eyes are doing that, but I'm always scanning rooms. Yeah. Like I'm looking who's coming in, who's going, like what people are doing. And I'm in here where I feel completely normal, right? Yeah. But it's just like to like just sit there like this. It's like I automatically assume that like I don't know what's happening here or here yeah. or behind me. I'm not aware of like who's coming and going, right? So like I'm doing that all the time, all day. When you were like in the peak of your previous career, how important was weight training just on the mental side? Like Honestly, as I did, I did more, I did more boxing when I was doing that than I did weight training. Okay. So I always wanted to like feel like I was sharp reflex wise. So like if someone took a swing at me, I my reaction would be good and my counter would be just as good so it's like because a lot of the times people aren't gonna in that line of work they're gonna sucker you right yeah not gonna get where like okay let's fight and then your guys are gonna like square off and like like work on your distance and like understand like okay like this is how this guy's moving it's like the guy's just gonna come up and sucker you or like he's gonna come from behind you and you need to have like your reaction time needs to be like that right yeah so it's like like in australia that happened one time no shit Uh, someone wait okay how big are you no one swung at me it's just that we were in a we were coming into a place that we wanted the private area. They were telling people to leave the private area, and the promoter guy who was with us, who was like trying to clear the room for my client or whatever, he was just talking to this kid. The guy's fucking drunk, right? So he said something, and then the kid left mouth off. He's like, "Listen, man, like I don't have time for your shit. Just fucking go." And the kid had his back to me, and he swung it. He swung at our guy and hooked him in the side of the head. So I hooked him right away, like from behind. <laughs> But I reached around and, and cracked his jaw like around his head and dropped him. And then I grabbed him and I was gonna hit him again, but he was just out. And I'm like, dead. what the fuck, right? Dead, but I yeah. didn't mean. But I didn't even know that I. It was just reflex. Yeah, like he hit him and I hit him. I was like, <laughs> and then even like, I, it's funny I don't tell this story, but I was like, his girlfriend started like, <laughs> his girlfriend like jumped on me and started trying to hit me and shit. So I'm just like, leave me alone, whatever, right? So and I knew like this kid's a fucking loser, right? Hundred percent, he's calling the cops. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm like, I'm gonna go to the. I told everyone I work with. I'm like, I'm gonna go down to the parking garage below the building. Yeah. I'm gonna sit with the drivers in the truck. Yeah. I'm like, let me know when the cops come and when they leave. Okay. So my buddy's on the radio. He's like, yeah, they're here now. They're looking at the tape. He's like, he's like, they're actually really impressed by how fast you hit. The <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and I was like, what? And then, so he tells me on the radio, he's like, oh, they're they're leaving. So I'm like, fuck it. So I went out the parking garage and I came up the front door. To walk back in, yeah. like, really throw them off. Yeah, yeah. Throw the set. So I walked in with a bunch pack. of our guys who had just showed up to the party. Right, it's like I was one of them. Yeah, and they're like, and I was walking. They were they weren't gone. They were in the front room, and I'm walking by them, and they're like <laughs> the female cop who was like, I guess their lead, whatever lieutenant or whatever. Yeah. She's like, she's literally like watching me walk in, like, and she's like, hey, and I'm like, what's up? <laughs> she's like, Good shot. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? She's like. It's okay. She's like, I'm like, I just got here. She's like, okay. okay. <laughs> She's like, have you ever thought of a job in law enforcement? I was like, nope. <laughs> I mean, you kind of do it now. You're doing the, you're front lines, man. Yeah. That was front lines work. Yeah, it was so funny though. When you were doing that, you had boxing. When you were playing football, you obviously had like weight training. Yeah. Now that. A lot of the, a lot of the reason why I didn't do a lot of weight training when I was working my other job was because I had like the hip, before I had my hip surgery, mm-hmm. I had a lot of hip pain. So like lifting would like, it was like annoying to me because yeah. it always aggravate it. Boxing would aggravate it too, but at least I was like moving. So like I was more, I felt more pliable. Yeah. I felt like I had to like just be more like in that kind of space than just like heavy lifting. So I just kind of diverted away from lifting then. And I was just lifting like after I would train just a little bit. And then when COVID came, that's when I started like getting back in the gym. Like I was like, I don't have anything else to do. Let's get, Let's start lifting again. Like, what are the big takeaways from that line of work? That, like, I mean, obviously, it makes things easier from the sense of like, look, I'm, I can go into crowds. I have the self awareness, but like, just the sheer stress of it. 
Like, what do you think people, maybe like a, a Mike Van Wick fantasy camp, live like Mike doing this career for <laughs> oh, like two weeks. Like in the same way people would do like, I'm going to prepare to do Bud's camp or something like that. No, I, I mean, I was really, I was really lucky to work for someone who's like not, especially in the world that they're in is very calm. Like yeah. they're not doing crazy things. They're not, yeah, they party a lot and stay out late maybe or whatever. Like just the hours are tough on a lot of people. But you're not being thrust into, like, horrible situations or, like, you know what I mean? Like, not that – like, here and there, there's a little bit of an, a situation, but 85 90% of the time, just doing nothing, right? It's just people – like I said before, it's just, like, understanding that you you don't have a life. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you, you work for so-and-so, so therefore you're attached to so-and-so. But you're not so-and-so, and you're not making their money. Mm-hmm. And you're not living your life anymore. You're doing whatever the fuck they want you to do. Yeah. Not in like some like negative way where like you're fucking following. That's, that's, like, that's job. the job. Yeah, you yeah, got to fucking sure. show up. And yeah. if I'm going here to fucking eat for next 12 hours, yeah. you're sitting here for 12 hours too. Yeah. And someone's going to get punched in the like, head. They and then meanwhile, them. you have like, you're going to have your wife or your girlfriend or if you're a girl, your husband being like, hey, are you ever coming home? Or yeah. I'm at home alone with the kids, the dog, the whatever, right? It's like. It weighs on you because you start to understand that you're, you're completely, you're a visitor in your own life. Yeah, weird. You're, you're not really like you're not present at all. What? So I mean, you had football, bodybuilding, you know, this career in insecurity. Yeah. What would be like? How would you define what you do now? Like, because well, I mean, training was a vein through all of that. Now training is yeah. Because when I thing. first when I first was in when I was bodybuilding, I was training to make a living, right? So I was training people. So I just kind of put a like a stop on that for like the six years that I did my other thing and now I just came back into it right okay but I always did it like I always still had passion for it and I was always still watching stuff and like I kept an ear to like the bodybuilding world I wasn't removed from it right like I would always know who won this show or what's going on like I'd see a lot of John Meadows stuff pop up in my feed and I really like I was like yeah this guy knows like what he's doing right yeah. now. He's like, he's directing people in a good way. Cause because you take like a lot of guys who are like fucking moron lifters, pros included, who are just like heavyweight, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, yeah, let's just try this though. And then they're like, oh my God, this is the biggest thing ever. It's like, yeah, yeah. no shit. That's how it's supposed to move. Like you don't need to tear your pec every, every four months. Yeah. Cause you're trying to bench your shoulder press the world. It's like, let's show you how to do <clears> things better. Right. So he was just, Someone that's whose style who I always like, I would always see his stuff in Charles Glass as well. And people do these comparisons of me and Charles Glass. It's like, I don't, I don't teach like Charles. I'm not like Charles. Mm. Like, I have a lot of respect for Charles, but he does a lot of, I think his idea of teaching, which is very smart, is putting people in angles that they can't mess up. Mm. So it's yeah. like, and it's genius. This is like, he understands just as well as I do. These big motherfuckers who have no mobility teaching them to understand like movement in their spine and like their head and all this stuff. It's like, it's a lot of work, right? So it's like, let's just put you on an angled bench and have you lean forward and then fall back and pull and force you into an arch and like force you to pull straight down. Right. So we engage your lap more, like just stuff like that or different angles. <coughs> to put people on. So he's very intelligent that way. Right. But my f- approach is just more like, I'd rather fix your overall movement and teach you how to move in the way I see that you should move and get you understand that once you understand that flow of movement, it's going to carry over to like the next thing we're doing. Has much of your approach evolved now that the majority of your time isn't being peeled away by other ventures? Like, you know, you're not playing football, you're not working these crazy hours. Like you spend, I would argue, I would imagine that you're spending more time in the gym now than you ever have in your entire life between work and training clients to training yourself. Yeah. Does that higher concentration of exposure to watching people move change the way you look at movement or change the way, like, a greater appreciation, change your thought process at all? Like, just having that movement concentrate all day. All you do is look at people move. Yeah, but it's just a lot of the, it's just a lot of the same stuff. Yeah. Like, you're just seeing people do this. Like, you could look at four people do bench press that day and you can see why everyone, like, they're all doing the same shit. Yeah. They don't understand. They're just lost. So it's like you see... I'm seeing it more now. Like I used to see, like, oh, that kid kind of bent. That, what the fuck's this kid doing? And I'm like, what the fuck's that guy doing? Like, what the fuck is? She doing? So many ways you guys are doing it wrong. Yeah, it's just like, and so you see that there's like you can go around and like tweak these people, the littlest thing, 
whether like their head position, understanding like where they're putting their tension on the lift, like where they're moving first. You know what I mean? It's just like I see I see a lot more similarities now in everything I see than I did before because yeah. I wasn't exposed to so many people, right? Yeah. Now, it's now just, I see it's like a it's basically a fucking epidemic of like horrible movement. Just like pattern recognition. That's that's why I show up to train people and like I want to train. I think we'll train chess today, and I haven't trained them for like I usually do this. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Shh, <laughs> like, shh. Just fucking press that. Okay, yeah. Stand up. This, 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 this. It's the same cues, right? Some people are really, some people are really difficult to train because they literally haven't developed any. I don't know if you've seen this. They have no movement in the rib cage. Like mm. they literally, they, their chest is never elevated. Their sternum's never come up. They've never like arched their back properly in their life, and they're stuck. Like whether it's genetic or like just they've like basically like locked down in this position because that's where they've decided they have power. Yeah. And the body doesn't want to go anywhere else. Those are the hardest people to train because like you have to put them in positions that are so awkward for them that they're literally the weakest they've ever been. Yeah. So then they, their fucking egos fucked, and the ones who are smart, they're like, oh, well, this feels. I feel this a lot more. And then their other ones are like, fuck, I don't want to feel that again. Yeah. They don't I show up weak. again. <laughs> really? Yeah. They're like, I don't want to. Yeah. I felt like a bitch. And for those people looking to like work with you, what's the process? You can just reach out to me on Instagram. A lot of people. That's how I meet a lot of people. They just write me on Instagram. Okay. So. Or they can email me off the website. Website is Wicked Worldwide. Wicked Worldwide. And you have apparel. Worldwide. The apparel. <laughs> <laughs> the Wicked Crispy shirt gets me. But I am excited about the Wicked Drawl shirt drop. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna. It should happen in like a week or two. All that's up on the website. Yeah. Well, it'll be. I'll tease it on my uh, my Instagram, but it'll be available on. My other company I'm a part of called mysupplements.ca. Yeah. That's where I sell the stuff from. So. I feel like that'll be the, that's going to be the retirement fund. <laughs> yeah. the, train, the training is one thing, but the, the fashion. Yeah. Because you can't beat the Fashionista. fashion. Fashionista. Yeah. The black shirts with the neon shoes. <laughs> yeah. the, the Mike Van Wick special. Well, yeah. uh, man, I appreciate you coming on. Appreciate you telling the, the wise tales and sharing the wisdom. Yeah. Big fan as always. Um, and yeah, well, you'll, oh, you're just going to be a co-host when I'm in town next. Yeah. We'll I'm just like, get through. I'm going for guest of the year. I think you're up for it, dude. <laughs> on YouTube, though, yeah. you're like orders of magnitude farther ahead than any other guest we've ever <laughs> yeah. had on. So we'll, we'll see if we can break last episode's record and we'll yeah. just keep checking it. Hopefully. All right, thanks, man.